I just want to uh, exhort us and encourage us a little. And, and uh, it's, it's what to do after such a great experience. What do we do? You know, uh, and it's not just as after a great conference, but after everything great in your life. You know, sometimes your life has a mountaintop experience. Uh, it, and it could be something like having a great wedding. What do you do after the wedding? Or you, you, you give birth and you are so happy and, and, and there's a big naming ceremony. What happens after that? Because after every major experience, after every exciting experience, life must still happen. Life still happens. And, and what do we do ab about that? So I'm, I'm just going to share a few things briefly with you uh, from the book of Acts and chapter 2. And we're going to look at what the disciples of Jesus did after they had had their Greater Works Conference. Do you know what the Greater Works Conference was? It was called the Day of Pentecost. They had a mighty wind from heaven, the sound of a mighty wind. The place is filled with the Holy Spirit. There are tongues of fire sitting upon them. I mean, that's, that's greater works. That, that is a massive experience. If you were one of the disciples, you, you, you would be amazed. you say, wow, what a day. And then Peter gets up to preach that day, and, and that's the first time Peter is preaching after Christ has died and resurrected, and he preaches a massive message. 3,000 people give their lives to Jesus. Now, you have to understand the background to this. Just 50 days before, Jesus had been arrested, had been crucified. The disciples are afraid. To all intents and purposes, Christianity is dead. Then the day of Pentecost comes and they have this massive experience. And then Peter stands and preaches and it is big. Bigger, better, greater happened that day. How do you top such an experience? What do you do after that? I mean, you've had the experience. You've had a big experience. Your life is full. You are excited about your life. What do you do? So I'm going to show you what the apostles did. The next verse that tells us about after everything, everything they did starts from Acts chapter 2 from verse 1 and it ends in verse 41. And then in verse 42, it says... So Acts 2, 42. And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship and in the breaking of bread and in prayers. It's actually the basis on which uh, our church uh, is organized. And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship in the breaking of bread and in prayers. This is after everything has happened. Great meeting, great glory, great power. What did they do? And they continued steadfastly. Then you go to verse 46. So continuing daily, with one accord in the temple and breaking bread from house to house, they ate their food with gladness and simplicity of heart, praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to the church those who were being, the Lord added to the church daily those who were being saved. So after the great experience, the passage says they continued. Continuing implies three things. The first one is devotion. Everybody say devotion. When we say devotion, I'm not talking about morning devotion. I'm talking about holding on to something as precious. Holding on to something as precious. When the Bible says they continued, the Greek word used there means they were devoted. 
They were devoted. In other words, they, they held on to what had happened as a precious thing, devotion. They were very devoted to God. The second thing uh, that means co uh, continued means to, to be persistent or persistence. Keep, to keep moving on in a set direction. To keep moving on in a set direction. You're going to need devotion, persistence, and the third one is constance, being constant to remain the same. So they were devoted, they were persistent, they were constant. It's very easy after a great experience to think that you need to pause. You know, after, after Greater Works uh, Friday, everybody say, I need to take a rest. I need to take a rest. Everybody was saying, I need to take a rest. I need to spend time to rest. And, and that is fine. You need to rest your body. But one, the danger is sometimes in resting, you break the system of continuity. And then you realize that although something great has happened, you didn't continue, you broke. So whilst you are resting, you have to find ways to continue. And one of the ways is to get the CDs, the, these days, I, I hear there's no CD. Uh, whatever way the message goes now, the MP3s, MP4s, get them and ensure that you are continuing where you left off. You're listening, you're keeping your faith watered, keeping your spirit alive, and keeping yourself strong because you have to learn to continue. Continuing is important because it helps us develop a lot of things. The first one is that when we continue, it helps us not to always start afresh. Not to always start afresh. Because if you break, you have to start afresh. But when you continue, you don't always have to start afresh. Because when you start afresh, you're going to start everything all together again. Continuing help us not to always start afresh. I think uh, one of the challenges we have, even as a nation, is that if, if you look at the history of Ghana, and I, I think the history of many African countries, and sometimes the history of our own personal lives, is that there's no continuity in our lives. We're constantly starting and breaking and starting and breaking and starting and breaking and starting and breaking. For the first part, much of our life as a nation was based on discontinuity. For a season, we used to have coup d'etats. So you start, you do a couple of years, then boom, you are sacked. Then we, somebody comes, destroys everything that was there, starts afresh, and then boom, he also goes. And, uh, we're, and so we're constantly starting, never continuing. And even in the democratic dispensation, every change of government is like a coup d'etat. One party comes after the next party, and it's almost like a coup d'etat. It, it's like, clear everything, let's start afresh. If you've listened to Ghana's conversation, almost every government uh, uh, since I have been alive and aware of, of uh, what is said, will, will say we are on the basis, we are just at the, uh, at the point of a takeoff. Have you heard that before? The Ghanaian economy is just about to take off. We have been taking off and taxing for a very long time. The plane is about to take off, it's going, it's going, it's going, then we stop it. Then the new pilot comes. We're about to take off, take off, take off, take off. We stop it. So we're constantly taxiing, never taking off. 
And if you are not careful, your life will also can be like that. You're constantly taxing, never taking off. Because the only way to, to live and to, and to really make the best of your life is that you have to learn to continue. Because continuity helps you to build momentum. Momentum. Everybody say momentum. Our lives must have momentum. That means we must gather speed. When we were kids, we used to play with uh, uh, vehicle tires. And I mean, you could play with the, the saloon car's tires and we, we push them along and, and, and all of that. But once in a while, you get maybe a big caterpillar or bulldozer, you know, the, the big tire. And it's so huge. And if you want to really roll that tire, it's hard. You have to work so hard and all of us kids, we're working so hard and we bring sticks in and then we lift the tire. And then we put it on its side or in the right form. Then you have to push it. And pushing it to get one cycle is the most difficult. And we are all, oh, push, push, push. And we keep pushing, and it goes one cycle. The next cycle is easier. The next cycle is easier. The next cycle is easier. At a certain point, even a baby can continue pushing the vehicle. Why? Because it's so hard to get things started. But if you continue, they become easy. Because you build momentum. And don't let our lives be that we are always struggling to begin and never build a momentum. You cannot build a life that is always struggling. And if you find your life always struggling, it's most likely you don't know how to continue. So every day is a hard lifting. Every day is a hard lifting. And when you lift, you drop the tire, you have to start all over again. I have said many times that I am not a, a very talented person. I'm not. I know myself. I knew me before I knew any one of you or before you knew me. Now, when I say that, people say, oh, you, you're just talking. I know myself. I've lived with myself for a long I'm not a very talented person. I've never been, a, been brilliant. I've never, I've, I'm not very talented. I'm very average. I'm a very average person. But one thing I have learned to do in life is to stay focused and continue. Amen. So when I start doing something, it builds momentum. You know why greater works is great? It's because we build momentum. We have the same speakers. And they come. The first time you hear them, it's like we are lifting a tie. You say, oh, I don't like this one. I like this one. I don't like this one. I don't. But as they keep moving and moving and moving, you flow with them. And as you flow with them, they build momentum. It speeds of day one of greater works. It's that, boom, because it is following the momentum that has been built. But if we keep changing and changing and changing, you'll find that every year you have to lift right from the start again. Our lives must have continuity. All right? Our lives must have continuity. When you start something, keep at it. Keep working it. Even the least talented person can do extraordinary things. I used to think talent was important. I don't really think talent is that important. I don't really believe being exceptional is important. So these days when I watch talent shows and they show uh, a six-year-old boy and he can do this and, and, and they can sing this and they can play the piano, it doesn't mean much to me because I... I read a book that studied all young pe people who started as geniuses. Whether they were genius footballers, you know, 
genius uh, violinist, genius pianist, and you would think, oh, wow. When they grow up, they're going to be exceptional. Almost all the time, they don't become exceptional. But those who started slow, they didn't seem to have much, who kept at it and kept doing the same thing over and 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 it's boring and it's dry, but they keep going and they keep going and they keep going. At one point, momentum builds. Then there they are flying and making great strides. So that's what the apostles did. What are we going to do? We've had a great experience. The Bible says they continued. They built momentum. So for us as a church, right after Greater Works ends, 2024 is ended. It was a great time, but it won't come again. The month of July 2024 will never occur again in history. It's gone forever. So the moment it starts, it ends, we start planning for next year. And we start the same process over again and moving and moving and moving and moving. Other people will say, oh, let's raise the rest. Let us enjoy what God has done. Enjoy it for a moment and spit it out and start all over again. So in life, we continue. Everybody say we continue. The processes must continue. The processes must continue. The systems must continue. And we must keep doing it. One of the things I believe God has called us to be as a church here at Christ Temple, not just ICGC, but this congregation is to be a congregation that feeds the body of Christ. A congregation that feeds the body of Christ. In other words, what we do here is not just for us, it's to impact, to renew, inspire, encourage the larger Christian community. We don't do things just for ourselves. We do things so that the body of Christ will be inspired and led. We want churches to come here, see what we are doing, and go and do better. We want, we want to be that. So there are three major conferences we are committed to as a church. And some you are not uh, fully aware. The first one, of course, is a Greater Works Conference. But last year, we introduced in another conference, the God Summit. The God Summit is also for the body of Christ. It's, it's to deal with the weighty matters of, of Christianity. It's an apologetics conference. And uh, last year, we had a fabulous time. This year, November, God Summit is coming on again, and we've been working towards that. It's a new conference. It doesn't have large attendance, but we keep working. We keep working. I don't get discouraged with small numbers. You just keep working and keep working and keep working, and then you build momentum for that one too. And uh, next year, we're going to start a new conference, and it's something I've been praying for, thinking about, planning towards for a very long time, I, I just trying to figure out the best way to do it, and I think I got clarity on how it should be done. Uh, and uh, it's going to be a pastors and church conference, and it's going to come on in, um, in March, from the 4th of March to the 6th of March uh, next year. And then it will continue every year. We call it doulos. Doulos is the Greek word for bond servant. Uh, and the reason why we call uh, or I call the conference doulos is because, you know, these days I, 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 I feel that pastors have forgotten that we are servants. And the word doulos means bond servant. The apostles of Jesus Christ always describe themselves as bond servants of Christ. And I just want to help pastors to develop that servant attitude to be servant to Christ and to his church. 
and, 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 to, and to embrace a modest and, uh, and a less pompous mindset. <laughs> less pompous. Of course, God is going to use us greatly. Yeah, of course, he, he'll do mighty things with us. It's one thing God using you greatly and you thinking you are great. It's two different things. It's, 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 it's a difference between God lifting you up and you thinking I'm high. You know, God is the lifter up of our head. God is the one who makes us great. But it doesn't have to get into your head. And I, I think that Christianity in Africa needs the bond servant mindset among pastors. And uh, so next year, we're going to have the first of that, and it will be hosted. It's going to be a big international uh, conference for pastors. We're having pastors coming from all over the continent of Africa. Uh, we're having some great speakers who will be announced later, uh, different sets of speakers, and uh, we, we would nurture that one too. Why am I telling you all of this? It means work. If you are in Christ's temple, it means that you can't be in this church and just say, as for me, I just go to church and I just worship. I love the worship, I love the worship. No, you have to be a worker. You have to be involved. You have to say, oh wow, a conference for pastors, I want to be part of it. Because I believe that if we're able to help pastors, churches will be all right and the congregations will be all right and people's life will be all right. But if the pastors get it wrong, the churches will get it wrong, congregation will get it wrong. We have to ensure that there's a proper flow from pastors to the churches to the congregation. And if you really are interested in Christianity and the future of Christianity and what Christ has done for us so that what we know to be Christianity can be passed on properly from one generation to the other. Not African kind of handkerchief, holy water, uh, and all kinds of, uh, kind of things of Christianity, which is almost like fetishism, uh, camouflage as Christianity. We have to bring the church to a place where its leaders are properly guided. And, and so that's what we're going to do. And, and we're going to need people to work. But beyond that, we're going to need financial support. We're going to need a lot of money. Because every conference costs money. It costs money for everything, I mean, every, you, you, are, you are human beings, you know, everything costs money. When we say that we are renting buses like Greater Works, we had, how many buses did we have? 150 buses. People were boarding it free. But do you think Ayalolo came and said, oh, <laughs> They want us to go Lolo with it. <laughs> no, 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 no. I, Lolo won't come and say that. Oh, you, we, oh, oh, what you're doing is so good. Oh, so wonderful. You want to give people transportation, so take it for. No, we have to pay for those buses every day times 150. Just, just put a figure on it, whatever figure. If it costs 2,000 to uh, hire a bus per day, and it's 150, and it's for five days, then you can have a, if it's 3,000, just, just do simple mathematics in your head, and you know that just to transport people freely, which they are worshiping God, oh, hallelujah, oh, the church loves us so much, the church is giving us free transport. They don't know it has to be paid. And there are people who take those charges up and say, I'm going to pay for that so that people can have the chance to come to church and, and worship him. Nothing comes for free. So if we're going to be a responsible church and we say, we're not just here to worship and, and go free, but we want to really be a church that is on the cutting edge. Our conferences are feeding the body of Christ. Greater Works is inspiring Christians and churches all over the world. Uh, Dulos is coming. It's going to inspire pastors and, and help churches to be well organized. And we're doing a God Summit and we are really de raising defenders of the faith of Christianity. 
All of these require money and church workers and effort. So you are not done yet, Christ's temple. Somebody say, we will continue. We will say it one more time. And for some of you, your prayer request will be, Lord, raise me up so that I can say, Pastor, whatever the budget for doulos is, I cover it. We want people to come in and say, whatever the budget for God's summit is, we cover it. Because these conferences, they don't make money, believe you me. You, you always run at a loss. Whatever the budget is for greater wealth, for buses, or for uh, this, or for that, or for that, or for that, I cover it. And that's the kind of response we want from you. And that's what I mean, that after this glorious time on the mountain, we have to continue. We have to be steadfast, we have to be devoted, we have to be persistent, and we have to keep pushing until we are able to raise that kind of effect in our church. And I, I'm really looking forward to the place where Christ Temple East is the headquarters of Christian conferences. It's the headquarters. And pretty soon, we're going to add a youth conference, we're going to do a men's conference, we're going to do a women's conference, we're going to do marriage conferences. So at every time, something big is happening here, not just for our members, but so that the body of Christ will be fed. God has raised us to feed the body of Christ, and we will play our role to feed the body of Christ. Amen? Amen. And I, I just want to invite each one of you to be part of this thing that God is doing, and as you are part, he will take care of you in ways you have never, ever known. Father, we embrace the challenge as a church to continue and to build a church with a global mind, which is not just thinking about itself, but thinking about the rest of the body of Christ. Use us, Lord, to feed your body. Use us, Lord, to encourage your body. Use us, Lord, to raise up people all over in every part of the world that in this place there will be life, there will be fruit, there will be abundance. And for everyone who commits to this vision, may you prosper them beyond their wildest dream. May they receive from you what they have never, ever had in their lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Hallelujah.